You should have been dead. It should have been over a long time ago. With Jagatai nothing more than a smear of torn skin and armor fragments on the floor. And yet, impossibly, he was still alive. Still fighting back. His arms must both have been broken. His fused ribcage cracked into ribbons. His sword notched and blunted. And still, he came back. Again and again. It was becoming almost painful to watch. The Primarch of the Fifth on his knees again after being smashed halfway across the open landing stage, struggling to get back up, the blood trailing from every armor seal was so profuse that he wondered how much more of it there could still be inside him. Entire sections of his ivory plate hung loosely on sinew-like straps, flapping as he staggered around. And through it all, he kept talking. He kept up the torrent of petty jibes and slights, even when Mortarian rained blows at his dented helm, smacked him deep into the broken up rockcrete. The barbs kept on coming, sometimes acid, sometimes brutal, sometimes acid, sometimes brutal, sometimes merely juvenile. Just take the damn mask off. I want to see your expression when I kill you. Your stench is worse than a Tulanor, and it was putrefying then. And the one that cut deep, for all its obviousness. I should have taken on the Legion Master. I should have fought Typhon. It was childish. It was beneath them both. Mortarian was beyond anger then, and had progressed into a kind of contemptuous weariness. Greater things beckoned. This petty brawl should not have mattered. It should not have still been happening. Power still pulsed through his system like raw Prometheum. The warp still animated his every gesture. His armies still held their ground against a faltering White Scar's attack. But this was becoming infuriating now. A maddening bump in the road that would just not clear. So he swung back into the fight. Two great strides, a gathering of momentum, and then a truly brutal backhand slash with silence that tore Jagatai's helm clean from his head and sent his body arcing high. The Khan crashed to the deck again, flat on his back, somehow keeping a grip on his fragile blade, even as Mortarian surged over him, slamming his staff's heel into his exposed midriff. Jagatai managed to twist away at the last moment, only for Mortarian to plant a vicious kick against his face, breaking both nose and cheekbone. Half blind and groggy, Jagatai lashed out with his blade, connecting with silence and wrenching it from Mortarian's grip, letting the staff clatter away. Mortarian dropped down sharply, piling in wildly with his gauntlets, slamming in punches at the Khan's throat, at his chest, at his ruined face. The clenched fists flew one after another, barely warded by Jagatai's flailing arms, tearing up the remains of that beautiful lacquered ceramite and splattering the two of them in more gouts of forge-hot blood. The Khan never stopped fighting back, but it was becoming pitiful now. He caught one of Mortarian's fists on the fall, only for the other one to plunge deep at his stomach. Bursting something within Jagatai tried to rise. Mortarian cast him down disdainfully, fracturing his spine. They were both roaring by then. Mortarian from frustrated fury. The Khan from undiluted agony. 
They had been reduced to this. Brawling across a derelict spaceport like a hive world gangers. Gouging and tearing at the body before them. Trying to rip it apart with their own fingers. Scions of the Emperor. Masters of the galaxy. Panting hard. Feeling like his heart was fit to burst. Mortarian finally ceased the barrage. The first ache of exhaustion rippling up his arms. His vision shivered a little. Still something mortal in him, then, after all. Something that could know fatigue. He got up. Painfully. Yagatai still breathed. Somehow, amid the swamp of gore that had once been a proud visage, the air was still being sucked in, bubbling feebly amid floating flecks of bone. Mortarian limped over to his scythe, hauling it up again, making ready to end the grotesque spectacle. I thought you'd dance, he said again, genuinely mystified. You just took it. Did you lose your mind? Jagatai started to cough, sending more bloody spurts out over the ripped apart ground. His shattered gauntlet still clutched the hilt of his blade, but the arm must have been broken in many places. Only slowly, as he trudged back, did Mortarian realize that the sound was bitter laughter? I absorbed it, Jagatai rasped. The pain. Mortarian halted. What do you mean? No, Jagadai said, his voice a liquid slur, the terminus zest. You gave up. I did not. And then he grinned, his split lips, his flayed cheeks, his lone seeing eye twisting into genuine, spiteful pleasure. My endurance is superior. So that was what they all believed. Not that he had done what needed to be done. Not that he had sacrificed everything to make his legion invincible. Even in suffering the ignominy of using Gallus as his foil. Even condemning himself to the permanent soul anguish of demonhood so that the change could never be undone by anyone. Not even his father. That he had been weak. The dam of his fury broke. He hefted silence, two-handed, angling the point towards the laughing Khan, no longer thinking of anything but sending its tip, spearing through his enemy's chest. And so, he missed the Khan's suddenly tightening grip, the flicker of white steel, the rapid push from the deck, an upthrust of the masterful blade. The white tiger penetrated deep under the single segment of Mortarian's armor plate that the Khan had managed to dislodge, biting deep, sending a flare of pain straight up into his straining torso. Silence's strike missed its aim as he jerked clear from the blade. Mortarian reeled away, blood leaking from the deep wound. And then... To his incredulity, the Khan was clambering back to his feet, still bleeding, still damaged. 
but already coming towards him. Mortarian, suddenly doubting even the evidence of his senses, staggered back into contact, doing just what he had done before, charging straight in, trusting to his colossal strength, and only then realized how drained to the bone he was by what had gone before. And then, then, the Khan started to dance. Not with any beauty that had been ripped from him, but still with that unearthly slipperiness, that mesmerizing power of appearing to be in one place, inviting the strike only to be a hand's width away just enough to drop under your guard and slice a piece of you away. He could still do it. He still had something left. And we do this with our ships? The Khan growled, no longer laughing, now deadly serious. We call it Zao, the chisel. Mortarian swung his scythe clumsily and missed. The Dao blade struck him again carving a deep rent along his trailing arm. The change was mesmerizing. The Khan was still on the edge of death, just one good impact away from annihilation. But he was moving again, faster and faster, as his Primarch's physiology did what it had been designed to do. Keep him alive. Keep his blade working. Keep him in the fight. Botarian snarled, working his scythe harder again, feeling his fatigued muscles scream even as his mind reeled from the realization. He should have seen through it. He should never have allowed himself to be goaded. Their blades clashed again, snarling in an explosion of mingled warp detonations, and the two of them both reeled away from the blow barely able to keep their feet. He was damaged. That had hurt him. And the Khan came back quicker. His smashed ankles somehow propelling him across the erupted ground faster than Mortarian could react. When the Dao clanged against the scythe again, the blood splattered freely. But it was no longer just jagged eyes. Mortarian swiveled on his heel and smashed the Khan away. That sent the Primarch tumbling, but he came straight back again, lurching from his catastrophic injuries as if drunk, his devastated face etched with excruciation, but still fighting through the toll of fearful damage. It was as if some malevolent spirit animated him now, pushing his ravaged body onward until it achieved the absolution it needed. The sword spun faster, blurring across Mortarian's double vision, getting difficult to stop. The two of them traded earth-breaking blows, tearing more of their priceless battle plate from its plate, smashing files, rupturing cables, severing chain lengths. Their cloaks were ripped to shreds, their finery destroyed their raw selves exposed in blood-mottled canvases of skin-stripped muscle, their presentation scoured back to the primal truth, that they were savage weapons, the numbered blades of an unwilling god. Mortarian was still the greater of them. He was still the stronger, the more steeped in preternatural gifts, but now all that he felt was doubt. Rocked by the remorseless fury of one who had never been anything more than flighty, self-regarding and unreliable, all Mortarian could see just then was one who wished to kill him, who would do anything, sacrifice anything, fight himself beyond physical limits, destroy his own body, his own heart, his own soul, just for the satisfaction of the oaths he had made in the void. If you know what I did, Mortarian cried out, 
fighting on now through that cold fog of indecision. Then you know the truth of it, brother. I can no longer die. It was as if a signal had been given. The Khan's bloodied head lifted, the remnants of his long hair hanging in matted clumps. Oh, I know that, he murmured with the most perfect contempt he had ever mustered. But I can. Then he leapt. His broken legs still propelled him. His fractured arms still bore his blade. His blood-filled lungs and perforated heart still gave him just enough power. And he swept in close. If he had been in the prime of condition, the move might have been hard to counter. But he was already little more than a corpse, held together by force of will. And so silence interposed itself, catching the Khan under his arm-stripped shoulder and impaling him deep. But that didn't stop him. The parry had been seen, planned for, and so he just kept coming, dragging himself up the length of the blade until the scythe jutted out of his ruptured back and the white tiger was in tight against Mortarion's neck. For an instant, their two faces were right up against one another. Both cadaverous now, drained of blood, drained of life, existing only as masks onto pure vengeance. All their majesty was stripped away, scraped out across the utilitarian rockcrete, leaving just the desire, the violence, the brute mechanics of spite. It only took a split second. Mortarion's eyes went wide, realizing that he couldn't wrench his brother away in time. The Khans narrowed. And that makes the difference. Jagged eyes spat. He snapped his dow across, severing Mortarion's neck cleanly in an explosion of black bile before collapsing down into the warp explosion that turned the landing stage briefly into the brightest object on the planet after the Emperor's tormented soul itself. Greetings, one and all. If you enjoyed that, you can support me on Patreon, Redbubble, or with a channel membership. Or simply like, comment, and subscribe to catch any and all future DQVO videos. And as always, my thanks for watching.